Hey folks, we are going to be discussing uh, the answers to some questions that were coming in last night's video, the earth will turn over in the pole shift. If you have not watched that video, please go ahead and watch it. And also while you're at it, please go ahead and watch the background videos, the homework. They are the first two links right under there in the description box below that video. Earth disaster is coming and the solar micronova is going to happen. Now, let's get into some of these questions, shall we? First things first, I can't tell you how many questions that we're asking what the world's going to look like after the crustal shift. Well, as I responded to most of those individuals, it was shown in that video. This is what the world is going to look like after the shift with the orange line denoting the equator. Go back and watch it if you have to, or just rewind and watch this a bunch of times till it sticks in your brain. Another way to do that is to be taking a flat map right here and grabbing Greenland and pulling it down to the equator. Uh, with a slight tilt due to the expected rotation during the tilt, uh, putting this pretty much at the exact same place. You can do this at earth.nullschool.net. You can also do it there on the circular globe, the, the round one, but you can only see half of the earth at a time when you do that, of course. But it, it'll basically do the, the exact same thing. You'll be able to see where your part of the world is going to be after the shift. Next question I saw that was worth responding to is if the tilt happens and the oceans flood major parts of the land masses, what happens to the salt left behind from the oceanic water that flooded the land? My response was that many areas have salt lakes. Some of it's there. There are also salt deposits. Some of it's there. But also remember, most of the salt washes right back out with the water when it recedes. What isn't is going to be highly diluted by massive global rainstorms in the aftermath. Another thing you can think about is the areas that get hit by hurricanes and specifically the water surge, the storm surge that comes up and invades parts of the land. Are those lands left completely salt barren? No, of course not. Just having the ocean rush up and then recede off of land does not quote salt the earth. Next, this question was not bad. One item that Chan Thomas mentioned, he says, was that the 1,000 mile per hour wind potential and several other things like that, two mile high waves. Chan Thomas got a couple of things wrong. There are no two mile high waves. There's no 1,000 mile per hour wind that would have completely scoured the earth clean and nothing would have survived. We know that the worst of all of these cyclical disasters was Le Champ, when about 4% of species went extinct and somewhere between 30 to 80% of the species population was lost among those that didn't go extinct. Still very bad, but not this bad. Don't forget, Chan also made other mistakes. He was going with the previous cycle where the big wave in America came from the Pacific. Remember, they alternate. They switch directions each time. It's not going to be the case this time. What's interesting is Chan actually gets the new pole positions right near Sumatra, near India, and near South America. But to get those pole positions, the waves have to go the other way than what he described. So Chan Thomas did a great job with the Adam and Eve story, but he did make some mistakes. Uh, this next individual says, this sounds like an extinction event. How quickly do you expect the land to physically move? How violent will it be? As we have said before, uh, somewhere between 17 and 30 miles per hour per minute of acceleration. Now, for those of you who know, about 17 to 30 miles per hour per second is an extreme stop at a stop sign. 17 to 30 miles per hour acceleration in a minute that is virtually nothing, but it lasts all day. So we're talking, this thing speeds up to hundreds of miles per hour after a couple hours, but it's a slower acceleration. It's speeding up and speeding up. And so the acceleration that your body feels is not so tremendous. Next question. If the earth will, if the earth will tilt 90 degrees in large part, of the weight in the ice, uh, weight of ice in Greenland and Antarctica being spun out to the equator by centripetal force. Excellent uh, restatement of the basic physics principle there. Why would the Earth then tilt back to its current configuration in the next cycle without counterweight ice sheets and other areas to sling out to the equator? Well, you're going to spend 12,000 years at the new polar regions. You're going to be accumulating quite a bit of ice. Not to mention that if that is where the instant freezes occur, the plasma discharge outward and plasma cooling, things like that, they're going to accumulate a phenomenal amount of ice. And so with the 12,000 year time frame between flips, there is plenty of time for new ice to accumulate at the polar regions. 
This individual said saying the book of Enoch in the Bible in the same sentence and trying to use both as evidence is straight blasphemy. Okay, so you may believe whatever it is you want to believe, and I will respect that. It is my absolute opinion that the blasphemy was eliminating the Gnostic texts. They should not have been discarded. They should be part of the book. Kind of like the church should uh, never have had priests molesting children. There shouldn't be pride flags in thousands of churches across the United States and Canada today. The notion that the church simply can do no wrong is not something I can get my head around, given the fact that it is in the hands of men. This individual says, I'm confused. Why, is, why does the depicted rotating globe clearly show that Africa rotates 90 degrees, but the United States just seems to move south? And as I responded to them, because to tilt 90 degrees on a planet requires axis points that only spin. Those are in Africa and the Central Pacific. So if we go back to the image that we saw a little earlier in the video, you see Africa and the Central Pacific. Those are still on the equator because they are the axis points of the turn. Again, if you haven't watched last night's video, please go ahead and do that. Please watch the two homework videos below that. All in all, you can watch all three videos in less than an hour and you will be more knowledgeable than 99.9% .9 of the people on this planet when it comes to Earth's disaster. I will see you in the morning for The Daily Show. Be safe, everyone.